Hi everybody! Today we are going to be making a mug in the style of an artist named Heather Galler. And she does these beautiful bright pieces of artwork and so one of our goals is to make ours really bright and full of patterns. And She also would use bold black lines so that's another thing that we are going to be using in our artwork today. So we are going to start by getting our mug onto our paper and adding a table behind it. The first part that I am going to do is I'm going to make a nice big opening for my mug for the top. And so I'm going to make that an oval. I don't want it to be a circle because we're not looking at it straight up and down. We're looking at it as a slant. So you only see part of it. So you'll notice when my hand is straight up and down, you see all of it. When it's slanted, it looks like it's thinner. So we, that's what exactly what we're gonna do with our mug. Below our mug, what I can do is I can pull my two fingers down, but then I wanna make them a little bit smaller. Okay, we want our mug is gonna have a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm gonna make a line, a dot here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull that in and I'm going to make a dot right about there. And I'm going to make another curved line just like that. Next I'm going to connect the edge of my oval down to this line. And you can use a straight line if you want to. You can also use a curved line if you want it to be a little bit more of a round mug. Okay, so I'm making mine a little bit curved. And it's okay if it's not perfectly symmetrical, meaning the same on both sides. This side is a little bit more curved, and that's okay. Not a big deal. Another thing that we are going to add is a saucer below our mug. And all we're gonna do to do that is just pull out Come around, curve back up, and back. So we kind of want it to look just like that. So now it looks like our mug is sitting on a saucer. Another thing our mug needs is a handle. Your handle can go on either side. Honestly, I would just put it on whatever size you whatever side you have more room on. So I have a little bit more room on this side, so that's where I'm gonna add my handle. And you can make it just come out and back. You can make it kind of a little bit fancy. You can make your mug handle however you want it to be. One of the things to notice though is that I am making it rather large and I'm gonna add a second line. So now I would have something to color in or put a pattern in for the handle of my mug. At this point, I have my mug, I have my saucer, I have a handle. The next step is to add a line for our table. Our table does not have to be perfectly straight going across. You can make it a little bit crooked if you want to. You can. We want to make sure that we're putting it between the saucer and the handle. The reason why we want it above where the saucer is is because we want it to look like the, t the saucer is fully on the table. It's not tipping off. And so I'm going to pull that line all the way over. So now I have my mug, my saucer, my table. In my background. Next is the fun part. We get to add our fun designs. What you can do is you can make some different spaces. You could add some different stripes and put a different pattern in each one. You could add just some cool designs all over it. You do want to be careful though and make sure that you're filling the space and it's not too crazy. So 
I am going to start my designs and then I will check back in in a moment. At this point, my mug is super full of some pretty crazy patterns, but I want you to notice I did keep them the same going all the way across. So here I made that bumpy line and then I put kind of this weird shape inside. In this space, I added stripes, I added squares, circles, triangles, I did a zigzag line, and then I just made bigger and then smaller and then even smaller bumps in there. Notice I have not put any patterns in here. This is probably just going to be a solid color, I think. But something that I am going to do is I'm gonna make some steam lines coming out of it. I have enough room that I could add just a little bit showing where the hot chocolate is. So this is the hot chocolate. This is the opposite edge of the mug. And what I'm going to do is right from the middle, I'm gonna come out, barely curve and up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar line and make it thicker. So that way I'm gonna leave that And I'm gonna make two smaller ones on either side. So now it looks like I have three little wavy steamy parts coming out of my work. Before we start working on the background, something that I am going to do is I'm going to make these mug lines thicker so that they stand out compared to my background. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go around again with my marker and you can use a regular marker for this and what I am going to do and you would end up tracing all of your patterns with a marker as well since mine are already done in marker I won't need to do that but you will want to outline over your patterns with a black marker before you start to color. But all I'm doing right now is I'm making that line thicker so that it stands out a bit more. It's gonna have emphasis, which is a great vocabulary word, and it stands out compared to things around it. I am not going to make the line like between the handle and the mug thicker. I'm only making the outside edge, so that contour line, thicker. At this point, I have widened all of the lines that I'm going to it for now. So I widened the table line the saucer line, just the outside, the mug, and again, just the outside, so those contour lines, which is the outside edge of an object. I am still kind of thinking in my head as to whether or not I want to outline around this steam. I'm not sure I do. Another thing that we still need to do is we need to add some patterns for our table and our background. These should be a little bit larger, not quite as detailed as the work that we have right in front. So I'm going to add patterns and I'll check back in in a minute. Now I have everything all drawn out. You, at this point, would want to go in and trace over absolutely everything with a marker. It does not have to be a Sharpie. It can absolutely be just a regular plain marker. 
The next thing that we are going to be doing is coloring in. Heather Galler's paintings and artwork are fairly flat. She doesn't change the value or try to make things look three-dimensional. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be coloring in the rest just with our crayons. If you want to and if you have them, you could use marker to color in, but I will say that if you want to use marker to color this in, you really should use a permanent marker to trace so that when you go to color, the black marker won't smudge into all of your other colors. So I'm going to use crayons because it's what I have handy and I will check back in when I'm all done coloring. After a little bit more thinking about it while I was coloring, I think that I am actually gonna use markers on my mug and my saucer, crayons on my background, because this way it's really going to put even more emphasis on my mug and my saucer. Okay, I went and grabbed my markers, so I am going to color in with marker. Again, if you have traced your mug and your lines with a regular marker, you are going to be very unhappy if you go in with markers now because, for example, if I use a yellow, if you were using regular marker, it would all blend together. But with the Sharpie, I can color right over parts of that Sharpie and it's not the black is not blurring into my yellow and making it look really muddy. If I had done this with regular marker, it would get very muddy and really ugly looking. So you want to make sure that you have traced over your pencil lines with a permanent marker to be able to get nice neat coloring when you're coloring with your marker. Make sure that you are coloring neatly and carefully, filling in all your white spaces. And you want to make sure that you're also, like here I'm coloring around those dots, because I'm going to make them a different color. So you don't want to simply color over everything, because that is not showing that you are putting effort into your work and really trying your very best. So I am gonna keep coloring for a while and I'll check back in when I'm all finished. Now I can call my mug complete. I have colored in the entire background with crayon and then I use markers for my foreground or for my mug. I used a Sharpie to trace and when I was coloring I really thought about what colors I was using and I wanted the colors to have a lot of contrast. So you'll notice in here I use yellow and violet and those are complementary colors and blue and orange are complementary colors and green and yellow are complementary colors purple i mean green and red i'm sorry green and red are complementary colors violet and yellow and then down here i did kind of almost like an ombre i went from blue to blue green to green on my saucer i snuck in the primary colors. 
So that is a choice I like, kind of sneaking in a little bit of extra art knowledge into my artwork, but you do not have to. You're gonna choose color combinations that you like. At this point, I'm gonna call it done. It's finished, it's all colored in. I left my steam white. Something that you could do is, and I'll show you in mine, you could even just color it gray a little bit or you could color it your background color but just a little bit lighter. So what I can do is I can color in the turquoise just a little bit and then the yellow with a crayon so it's just a little bit lighter. So see how that steam looks a little bit different? But it's up to you as to what you kind of want your steam to look like. You could even put the color and some gray so it just looks a little bit different than your background. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed following along and I will see you next time. Bye everybody.